Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do nations assemble and peoples plot vain things? This is Midrash form, which means I'll be repeating part of the verse and then making a commentary on it. Why do nations assemble? Anti-Semitism and hatred of the Jewish people. And peoples plot vain things. Throughout the world, and particularly the Middle East, there are plans and schemes to destroy Israel and the Jewish people. Verse 2. Kings of the earth take their stand, and regions intrigue together against the Lord and against his anointed. That's me. I'm the man of Isaiah chapter 11, the Spirit of God alights upon. That is the anointment. God anoints me by having his spirit alight and enter into me, and God is in his spirit. Kings of the earth, the world leaders and heads of nations, leaders of states and government organizations, and leaders of religious foundations and organizations, including churches, and leaders of groups of people in general, and those that promote anti-Semitism and seek to convert Jews to Christianity against the Lord and against his anointed, that is the God of Israel and God's righteous servant described in Isaiah 53, the teacher of righteousness. Verse 3. Let us break the cords of their yoke, shake off their ropes from us. Let us break the cords of their yoke. Kings who take their stand and regions who intrigue together do not bind the Lord and his righteous servant. The description of God's righteous servant, which is the descendant of David, the anointed one, Mashiach, of chapter 11 of Isaiah, begins in chapter 52, uh, 13, 14, and 15. This is 15. Just so he shall startle many nations, kings shall be silenced because of him, for they shall see what has not been told them, shall behold what they never have heard. Just so he shall startle many nations, kings shall be silenced because of him, Nations, the Gentiles, startled, and kings, leaders of nations of Gentiles, silenced by seeing God's righteous servant, God's servant David, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses as one man. And hearing that God's righteous servant arrives in the time to come of Jeremiah 31 and the day of the Lord. That God's righteous servant is the only man to come who is described in the scripture and is inherently and implicitly the anointed one, David, Elijah, and the prophet like Moses, of whom there is no description for identification. That the Jewish people throughout the world will be forgiven by God of all their iniquities and sins by God's written word in the day of the Lord. The sin forgiveness of Jeremiah 31 for a time to come. That heaven is being created for only the Jewish people. That God's righteous servant of Isaiah 53 is a Gentile according to the scripture. In the beginning. That Jesus being a Jew cannot be God's righteous servant. That God's righteous servant is familiar with disease and crushed with disease, blemish, and can never be an offer for sacrifice. That a host of the Lord's host is a man in divine beings. That the captain of the Lord's host is a Gentile host of the Lord's host and a harbinger of God's righteous servant. That Right, the captain is a Gentile. And God comes from Adam. He comes from Gentile territory. And of the peoples, the Jewish people, none are with him. He comes with the Gentile. 
that God's righteous servant becomes a man and divine being when God's spirit, who is the angel of his presence, the angel of the Lord and the Holy Spirit, alights upon him, me, in Isaiah chapter 11, 1 and 2. And God is in his spirit. You can find that teaching in Ezekiel. That God would really redeem the Jewish people and in the same manner that he did in the Hebrew Bible with one man. That the time to come of Jeremiah 31 began when the state of Israel was created in 1948. And that God's righteous servant fulfills and completes the remaining prophecies of God in the day of the Lord. As four men to come, two covenants to be delivered by two of those four men. One is a covenant of friendship, which includes God placing his sanctuary amongst his people, which means he knows, he knows there will be no temple in the day of the Lord. It has to be built. Verse 4. He who is enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord mocks at them. I've lived with God now for 13 years after the Spirit, actually the Spirit that lighted upon me uh, when I was born. When I was born. Uh, it's referenced as from the womb by Jeremiah. Um, but, uh, but he did not speak to me until I was 50 years old. Uh, he orchestrated my life to be sure I lived a, a, a life of pain, suffering, familiar with disease, and so that I would fit every single verse of Isaiah 53. Oh, <laughs> and I've never actually heard God laugh, but he sends me a perception of him laughing all the time. He's very humorous. And uh, the spirit, well, he keeps God laughing. That's part, of, that's, that's part of the person that God created. I want somebody that, that keeps things light and keeps me uh, uh, joyful and laughing. He has a serious side, though. It's called his backside. Now, I know his backside. <laughs> I'm not better than anybody. Uh, because that's his bad side. You know, his good sides, his front, um, talking to him face to face. But his bad side is uh, chastisement, punishment, maltreatment, crushing, bruising, and wounding that I've been to in God's power of refinement as he prepares me over these 13 years, and he has not stopped preparing me in these very ways um, all this time. And, uh, but, but we are doing things positive towards heading to Israel eventually. Verse 5. Then he speaks to them in anger, terrifying them in his rage. Then he speaks to them in anger. The Lord speaks through his scripture and his righteous servant. That I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. That I have installed my king on Zion. Today this is prophetic for his righteous servant who is to clear the way for the Lord to return to his temple in his capacity as Elijah. That's me. How do you know I'm Elijah? Ask me anything about heaven. That's why God specifically takes Elijah and him alone to heaven and then he returns. The proof of this righteous servant, and of course Elijah was righteous and a servant, is who he says he is, is his knowledge of heaven. And there's very little I do not know. I know everything I need to know. Prophetic for his righteous servant to clear the way to return to his temple, which must be rebuilt. When the temple is bought, built, God will return to it suddenly, and his righteous servant will be installed in an abode to be honored. Chapter 11, verse 10, Isaiah. Now, he's actually said this to me. He said, he said, look at that. I said, okay. 
He said, Solomon took longer to build his house than he spent building my house, the temple of God. <laughs> and what is, what is an abode to be honored? What is that? Is it, is it a, a, a multi-million dollar home? Is, is that to be honored? Is it because I, the righteous servant, live in any home and it's to be honored because God's spirit is lit upon me and God is in the spirit, meaning it's his abode too, as he walks the earth using my legs, as he did Moses and walked amongst the tents of the Israelites. That, that's what that's about. But he, they, they have told me, there's no reason we can't put a very small little house on the Temple Mount by the Temple itself for you. He said, I have a lot of other changes I'm going to add too. And the fact is, just because the Temple reopens, this new third Temple, that doesn't mean he's going to dwell in it until I die. So having me up there just makes sense. Verse 7. Let me tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, You are my son. I have fathered you this day. Again, as I mentioned, he came to me at birth. God has no son. You are my son. Israel was God's first son, and then David, and then Solomon. It's figurative language. God's not human. That's, you know, sons and daughters. That's just for human beings. But it's a term of endearment. Uh, son of God is a term of endearment. It signifies a close relationship with God. Man, that would be me. As I said, we've, we've lived together for over 13. Well, he's been with me forever, but I didn't know about until I was 50, and I'm 63. And he's been training me up for this in the manner, in his file of refinement, and teachings. Teachings are a, a very big part of it. And just the experiences I have gone through over these 13 years have completely changed me. It's just not the same man I once was, not even close. I certainly wasn't born for this task. I mean, I had, I, I, it was kind of like clay that he's been orchestrating and now uh, training up and teaching for the last 13 years. Ask it of me, and I will make the nations your domain, your estates, the limits of the earth. Your estates, the limits of the earth. God's righteous servant is described in Isaiah 53, which provides in verse 12, Assuredly, I will give him the many as his portion. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil. The many and the multitude will cover the earth. They come from all nations, the Jewish people, from every nation of the world for the most part. I mean, I suppose there's some that are not in, but that's what that's about. The many and the multitude from across the world. Verse 9, and remember this is written for antiquity first, the people of antiquity. You can smash them with an iron mace, shatter them with potter's wear. Okay, them today are the world leaders and heads of nations, leaders of states and government organizations, and leaders of religious foundations and organizations, including churches, and uh, specifically those that promote anti-Semitism and the conversion of Jews to Christianity, which quite frankly is anti-Semitism. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4, 4 says that God's anointed shall strike down a land with the rod of his mouth and slay the wicked with the breath of his lips. It will be with the Hebrew Bible and the words God has me speak and write. Everything I read from this comes from the two books that he dictated to me as the prophet like Moses. So see, I've already got the prophet like Moses. I've done I've done the writings. Uh, Elijah, we're putting the knowledge that I have that's in these books on video. Um, now, the descendant of David, his attributes would be that of a warrior, kingly, such. Um, that'll come on down the road. 
And it would, as you can imagine, to take Islam back, uh, to take it off of God's Temple Mount, there will be war. It just won't be utter destruction. I have videos on that, what all that means. Verse 10, So now, O kings, be prudent, accept discipline, you rulers of the earth. That's God speaking to the Gentiles, which includes all Christianity and all of Islam. Be prudent. You can imagine, you know, they're not going to be happy at all when the Jewish people start raising me up and saying, the proofs are undeniable of who, we're, of who this man is. It is undeniable. We have been right about God all along, the Jewish people say, and the kings and the nations are going to have a fit. And yet, interestingly, because of this false teaching of a messianic era, for instance, Jews for Judaism, to make, to make the people Israel fit, into Isaiah 53, the Jewish people as Israel, is based on the Messianic era occurring, this utopia on earth for the Jewish people. That's what it's based on. And the witnesses, the witnesses are the kings. Not even close. They're silenced and they're startled. They're startled and they're silenced. If they're silenced, they're not witnesses. It's as though God knew how to eat. Those words would be important for this day. Verse 11. Serve the Lord in all. Tremble with fright. I fear him. Now, because, I mean, the first thing he told me was, your pain means nothing to me. And he's proven it over and over again. You know, until you're pinned down by an unseen force and he, he can he can bring any kind of pain he wants to any part of your body. Any, I mean, just pain, just sheer pain and just leave you in it. Not for a minute, not for a day, weeks, months. He says, that's what changes you. You just have to endure it. I'm not going to let you die. I'm not going to let you go insane, but you will suffer. Is that, did I miss you not seeing his backside? I see it every day. At least for a little while. Verse 12. Pay homage in good faith, lest he be angered, and your way be doomed in the mere flash of his anger. Happy are all who take refuge in him. Thank you very much.